Hello everybody. So in, in this screencast, we're going to look at how to store data on Firebase. And we are going to use the Firebase real-time database. So let's just before even going to the documentation, let's, so if I am in the console of my project and I click on database on the left here, it shows me this, right? So now I'll create a database. So you can just click on creating a database and then it asks you, um, uh, it's the cloud fire store. I don't want the cloud fire store. I want the real time database. So let's scroll down a little bit here to see if we can create a cre uh, or choose the real time database. I would like to create the uh, real time database. So create on create database. Let's use it in test mode. This is a security feature which enables you to control who is able to write and who is able to read to specific locations in the database, right? So uh, let's use test mode for the time being, and then we'll talk about the lock mode later. Test mode, which is a, a very liberal approach of storing and it doesn't, it's not very restrictive. Okay, cool. It even tells you that your security are defined as public. Anyone can steal, modify, delete data in your database. Okay, so just this is in test phase. So you can see that there's nothing, right? So it says that uh, fear demo. So basically, this is called the main reference of your database. This location. Now I can add some data. Let's say I want to add, say for example, user users. Okay. Or let's say I want to add uh, information. Okay. I want to add under information. Let's say the name of the person is say Bob, for example. And then I want to add also the age of the person is say 35 uh, or 25. Let's say the address. Key value pairs, right? So the address is say uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. So you can see here that I have something, a node that's called information. And then under information, I have another node that's called address. And this is the value that this node points to. And then I have another node that's called age. And then this is the data that it points to. So basically, uh, we created a data node, right? And you can see that uh, info. And then under it, some data. Okay, so basically, if you look at this data, it's hierarchical. This is the parent. You see, this is the parent node. Okay, and then under that parent node, there is another node called info. There's a child that's called info. And then under that info child, there is another child called address. Okay, and then inside that address, we can get the data that, or the value that this address points to. Okay, so that's basically, uh, I can add another node. I can go here and could say, for example, another node, let's say we call it uh, 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 users, maybe. Okay, and I'll add, uh, um, uh, let's say, let's avoid users. Let's do something else. Users is okay, but uh, I'll say, for example, let's say I want to add uh, another node. Just let's call it control. Okay, and then I'll go, say, color. Let's say is red. And we call the title. This is uh, information, like for example, login info, for example. I click add, and you could see here that I have a control node. So I have an info node, and I have a control node. And I can add as many nodes as I want, and so on. So basically, you could see that the data is really a hierarchical kind of data, right? And we are able to add and delete data here. You can also have lists of data. We we'll look at that, so you can have an array of data. We we'll look at that also. Uh, but this is this gives you a, a quick overview of what this Firebase database looks like. It's a big JSON file. So basically, you can go here and export it as JSON. See, It's a big JSON file that sits on the cloud, and you are able to control uh, data in that JSON file by using the path. What is the path? It's the root node, and then the child is control. So basically, root node, then control, then go to color. Okay, and so on. So basically, how do we do that in Firebase? So now if you look at the documentation, let's go back to the documentation. So I'm not looking at authentication. I'm interested in real-time database. And it's iOS, right? So basically, there is getting started and so on. So basically, getting started is you need to add to the... Um, let's open that project again so that we can work on it. This is the same project that we used here. There is a pod file. We need to add to that pod file the database. Uh, the database uh, pod here it is so it has the auth pod now it has the database pod also and i'm just gonna run uh i'll save this file and close it and then we do pod in it or pod install sorry pod install and 
und so yeah the database feature and then we run it yeah perfect so now let's see how do we this is the view controller that we had so let's say we want to log in and then after we log in we want to do something so basically this was the sign in right so basically after we sign in so we signed in as b as bob b smith and if it's not equal to null i want to store something okay i'm going to store some data okay let's say uh, that data is i want to change delete that stuff here so here we're signing in as b smith and then after we sign in we here we figure out if we're signed in or no if we are signed in we just want to write some data so how do we do that to be able to write data you have to find the reference to this data so basically if you look at here this shows you how to install it right how we configure it and then this is how you make, get the reference so basically the reference is just the uh when you say database dot database dot reference this points to the root of the this is this reference this is this okay so basically if we just do reference so just the main reference that we have right so if we go back to the project now if we have the main reference here it is so i could say let this is the root i'll call it the root reference okay root reference this one i need to import firebase okay so now when i say this is the root reference now can i store something in the root reference yes very easy all what i want you to do let's say i want to change the value of control and i want to change the color i want to change it to yellow okay so how will i do that uh, if you look back again at if we make get this a little bit to the left so that you can see both screens you could see that this is the root reference then it has a child called control so i could say root reference to child and the child is called what control right and then under child there is a value there is a child called a called color right so or so what i could do is i could say dot update child values right and there is a completion handler and you give it a hashable a hashable which is pro is going to be a dictionary right so we go here the values i will come to the values in a little bit now this is the completion block error and dbref we'll call this one dbref okay db ref okay so here i'm telling it that to go to the root reference the child is called control i want to update the child values i want to update for example color to yellow okay perfect so basically i will run it again and see so we ran it the app should run okay here's the uh, the phone i want to i want you to look on the left side here of the screen you will see that when the app runs everything goes okay the color will change to yellow okay so the app is running here we are and everything went okay and then we're looking on the left to see if the color changed but it didn't why because we put the code in the wrong region it shouldn't be here because this is the part where the login didn't happen right we want it when the, actually the login happens right so it's just here when you are successful right? if you are successful then do this right of course because if you're not successful we, we don't want to store the data right so we run it again here we are the app is running look here and it did change to yellow so basically i'm able to store data on the on the um, uh, i'm able to store data on the server right so basically i could change update color i could add another value let's say i want to add uh, for example uh, name i could say the name is say bob smith run it again run it again and you will see that the app will when the app runs you'll see that there will be another node that gets added here it is name is bob smith the color is still yellow so basically i'm able to add data all what i need to do to add data is to find out where i want to add this data so and how do you do that you just say the root reference and then you go deep into the hierarchy so i could even add something here where i could say child okay i'll say for example that child is uh i'll call it for example test 
Now I want to go from the root reference down to the control, down to test. I don't have a test node here and then update the children to have these values. We run it again. So now what's going to happen is that we're going down control. There is no test to create a test node and then add these children in it. You could see here control test and then it add these nodes here. Okay, so basically it's very straightforward. It's very similar to the notation that we have on the web where you have say HTTP, for example, www.abc.xyz and then you have a child, child one, and then you do child two and so on, right? So and so on and so forth, right? So basically uh, you can do it this way. Okay, this is how you can go down into the hierarchy. Another way also of doing it is to include it like this. You could say, I want to go from control, I want to go to test, and then you can even go, uh, let's call it uh, uh, test, and then under test, we can even go further, ABC, for example, and run it again. So basically what's going to happen is that it's going to go to control, and then test, and then ABC. Okay, so you'll see that there will be an ABC node that gets created here, Okay. Here it is. You could see control, test, ABC, and then under it you have this data. Very nice. So now how do you delete data? Somebody asks, okay, how do you, so this is how you add data, right? You can update or you can also set child values and so on. This is how you add data. Now, what if you want to delete data? It's very easy. You just set the data to nil. Okay, like say, for example, if we go here and update child values like this, and you could say nil. Now what's going to happen is that this ABC node is going to disappear. If you just set it to nil, run it, or update it to nil, okay, it's not happy. Okay, why it's not happy? Expected a value. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do, or you can make it empty. Okay. Now run it, you'll see that it's going to be Okay. Uh, okay. So now another way is to do it this way. You say root ref dot child. Okay. I'll copy the path from up there, and then I could set value. Okay. To nil. So basically, I'll just say nil, and it's gonna be okay. And then I'll copy this stuff in this place here. And we're good to go. Okay. And then this is the path. Okay, so basically this is how you a how you set you delete a value. Just set it to nil. Run it. You will see that now ABC will disappear once the app runs. So here it is. Where is the app? And you could see that ABC is turning red and it disappeared. You can even delete a top node. So for example, what you could do is I could just go up to control. I just can delete the whole control node. Run it. Now the control node is going to disappear. So basically, I'm telling it that the control node set its value to nil. And when you go here, it just goes away. The control node is removed. Okay. So now we are able to see uh, how to add data, right? So we I did add the data here, right? We did add data. Okay. Now, uh, after adding the data, let's say there is another way of adding data. Let's say I would like to create again so we'll say root ref dot child control so i'll add another control control and then we will say child by auto id this will create under control uh, a, a child which has an auto id okay and that auto id is just a random number that's going to show up okay and then i will say update value or set value set value to here it is and then we'll do the same thing this is the block error uh, and then dbref i'm not including all the error checking and so on because i just want to show you as much as many things as possible in this video so basically set the value we'll say color and let's say is red and let's say name some random data so that you could see you, uh, Smith. 
Now when you run this, you will see that it goes to control and then it will create a child which has a random number and then under the child it will have these values. You run this. Okay. Now the app is running. Okay. And you can see that it is control and then it created an auto ID for a child and then it put this data in it. Now when you run the app again, you will see that it will create the same story. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to create a new node under it. You can see here it created a new node under it, which is another child that has uh, data under it. And you can see it maintained both childs. And that is how arrays are managed or array of data is managed in Firebase. You run it again, it is basically going to create a new one. Okay, so this is an arrays of data here. Okay. So we have seen how to add data to Firebase. In the next video, we'll look at how you can read this data from Firebase. Um, I hope this was useful. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.